hello and welcome to grumpy old men. tonight one of the most colourful and controversial characters in the history of the afl, plus a man who kicked one hundred goals in a season. and speaking of kicking one hundred goals in a season bobby, do you think it's ever going to happen again? well i think it's very doubtful kevin, to be truthful. i think uh, first of all, most full forwards there are only, what, three or four that actually have the position, don't they? Continually. Mm. And, uh, well, this season, for instance, uh, they'd have to kick a great heap in the last five or six games to do it. What about Lloydy, uh, Bob? What about well, Lloyd? Lloyd? I mean, if he didn't get injured, Kev, he... Oh, he, well, that's he, right. One play could probably kick 100 goals. Yeah, but their team is starting to fall apart. Around. You reckon they're falling apart, the ball? <laughs> well, they are. They're not <laughs> kicking the ball as well to him, to be okay. truthful. It's not easy to kick 100 goals in a season because I think only 26 players in the history of the game have actually, you know, scored a ton. How far did you get along the track, Kevin? You were even close, Kevin, I reckon. Yeah. I scored, I think, 84. 84 was my highest. From a half forward season. flank? Yes. Forward pocket? High no, yeah. Scored. Back pocket, two shots. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Bob. What about the most goals you got in a year? 49, I think. Well, you'll yeah. love this one, Kevin, Bob. Yeah. I won the Bulldogs goal kicking in 1990. Guess what? 38. 38 goals. Yeah. 38 goals. I've got the Jack Collins medal in 30. I'm very proud of it. Were they left or right foot, Dave? Uh, I can go both ways. Oh, you know both ways. Yeah. Well, it's a great effort when you look back, Bob, and you think that uh, Bob Pratt back in the 1930s, oh. was able to kick 150 goals. Of course, we know that was equaled by Peter Hudson as well. Uh, in the, you know, in How the many games kept back those Kilda. days? Was it only 18 games? Was it 18 games back those days? And finals. Yeah. And, and finals. Fi okay. But, I mean, it was just an amazing effort. Did, did uh, Bob Pratt kick 100 goals in 14 games or something? Was it 14? I think it might have even been 11, Bob. It might have been mm. Yeah, it was fantastic. Enormous effort, isn't it? Yes. And, of course, Gordon Coventry was the first to kick 100 goals in a season, even though great full forwards like, you know, Ron Todd and, and Dickie Lee weren't able to do it in those days, but Gordon Coventry was the first from Collingwood. A little bit of trivia. Who was the first man to kick 100 goals, not in a season, but to reach 100 goals? Would it be Gordon Coventry? No. Who? Dick Lee. Dick and Lee. he was the first from... to reach... He was the first to reach 200, he was the first to reach 300. This is aggregate goals. Aggregate goals, yeah, and I think the first one to kick 400. Well, who's kicked the most 100 goals in, the, in, in their career? Who's Tony Lockett. That? Tony Lockett, did he? Six times. Six times, Six KB. Times, yeah. Beautifully done, Kev. Bob, <laughs> our next guest is a very colourful and controversial <laughs> figure. Oh, oh, oh. Look what I've found, oh. Kev. Did you find her? Aren't you lucky? <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> yes, our first guest this evening, the very strong, the very tough, the very handsome, Mel Brown. Oh, <laughs> you're <laughs> brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Have a seat, uh, Mel. Sit You've had experience at that business, Mel. Gee, I'm trying to find a mum's number. <laughs> well, this was me. very lucky because over in Perth you were famous for hitting a, a grandmother one day, weren't you? You Owned punched an old lady at, over 60. up in a restaurant. Over 60. She was over 60. And they can't be your own size and looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, tell us a bit about Mel Brown uh, the, in the early days because uh, you were a champion footballer over in WA, came from East Perth, uh, went to Scotch College, uh, won the Sandover medal. Mm. T tell us about the early Mel Brown before we get to the Mel Brown that came across to Melbourne. Oh, well, I suppose I was a country boy from Darren who was very lucky uh, to be able to... Where go. is that for a start? About Tell 100 us miles that... east of Perth, I suppose. What, uh, were you on a farm or what no, were you doing? I uh, had the general store. A and, general uh, store? had the general store and that's how we uh, developed such a relationship with most of the Aboriginal families around there because uh, my dad used to provide them with boxes of food when they shut the shop at six, uh, 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock Saturday. He'd load up all the veggies and take them out and give them to... Uh, most of the families that couldn't afford it or didn't yeah. want to feed their kids, one of the two. And then went to, lucky enough to be uh, recruited to East Perth um, under Hex Strempel and uh, Fred Book. who were Freddie fairly, Book, the undertaker. The undertaker, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Polly Farmer was there and uh, the great Derek Chadwick, who was a, yeah. a state cricketer as well, and a uh, boy called Keith Donkin, who I think was a uh, All-Australian in 66. They had a pretty good group. And Sid Jackson. And the, re the red-headed fullback. Mel Atwell. I was with Malcolm Atwell just recently, actually. Oh, yeah. uh, he's 65 and he was a very tough. He left the year yeah. after I started and coached Perth the three premierships. How old were you, Brownie? How old you went down to? Uh, to uh, 18. 18. And when you won the Sandover, Kev said. What age were you when you won the Sandover medal? Oh, 23, I suppose. 23, uh, 22. Now, you also played with one of the best footballers that I 
have ever seen. Ted Kilmurray. Yeah, Squarey Kilmurray. Yeah, yeah Square. Was, yeah, he was, a, he was the guy in West Australia that invented the flick pass that used to flick the ball out. Yeah. And uh, he was a Sandover medalist. And, yeah, he and, beat uh, Polly when Polly was right at his peak in the same team. Yeah, and he came from Sister Kate's with Polly Farmer Yeah, that's as right, well. they were in and, Sister uh, Kate's together. So he was an Aboriginal player? Aboriginal boy, yeah, uh, bloke. And uh, one of my heroes, Squarey, and I was lucky enough in my first game, uh, I think he kicked backwards to kick the ball to us when I just ran out on the ground in my first game against uh, East Fremantle, which Kevin Murray was our coach and we mm. played on Easter Monday, I think, and he was a marvellous player, Square Call Murray. He was just a, a super player. Yeah. Did you always have a dream of playing AFL football? I didn't have a dream of playing AFL football. I had a dream of playing WAFL football um, because in those days uh, we beat Victoria in the 61 Carnival. Um, we had the blokes of Gabalich come over and players like that. And... Uh, my dream was always to play for in, for in Western Australia uh, and then obviously to play for Western Australia. You had a very fine confrontation one day at the Adelaide Oval when we used to have the Championships of Australia. Is that, it, what time was that? 72 I reckon, maybe, yeah. what was it? Yeah, about, yeah, it was about 70. That was a bit <laughs> ironic, ironic really, that uh, game because uh, uh, it was a pretty tough game and yeah. at the end of these season games you thought were going to be a little bit of fun and uh, a couple of the young blokes, and you look back when you get to our age, a couple of blokes got belted and uh, uh, it was Carlton after all and uh, <laughs> we used to get double pay for hitting a Vic as well so it was a, a double whammy then. Is it a big year Brownie 72? How did you go when you went away with the Australian guys to Greece? You um Went swimming in Greece, was that in 72 as well? You had a bit no. of a swim with, I the, got, with the gear yeah, off? Yeah, I, I went for a swim in Idra and David <laughs> Clark pinched my pants <laughs> and uh, I got put in jail <laughs> and uh, there was rats running around and I'm in a green pair of undies and I look like I'm out and uh, a bloke came up and showed his badge and they put me back in jail again <laughs> and I offered a, a thousand drachmas to their sporting foundation which was six dollars, and uh, <laughs> $6. Uh, a bloke called Theo Marmara saved me, and about, well, I, we all thought it was fun, and Barassi yeah. was there carrying on, and all. They yeah. thought, we thought it was a lot of fun, and the boy and a girl skinny dipping about a month later got three months jail for, for, <laughs> for doing, the, doing the same thing, so it could have led to, uh, well I suppose a lot of people would like that actually. Mm. Let's get back to the football a bit. You came over, did you did have many offers to come? My, my mistake was coming over too late, yeah. but the problem was then you couldn't get cleared. I think I was only cleared that one year yeah. for one year to Richmond and had to be cleared back. Now, whether I stayed with Richmond and they redid your contract or whatever, but uh, I was made coach, I think, at 23 or 22, yeah. and on $4,000 a year. And you didn't get, you know, you just didn't get, uh, you couldn't get cleared. And that was as simple as that. You had to go where you were told. Well, this would be a oh, lot of you playing a game, actually. You only played for it, did you? <laughs> and uh, across to Noel Carter, who actually went across to Western Australia, and in fact, captain. Western Australia and won a... Did he win a Sandover medal No, he well? should have won a Sandover medal. Might have been runner-up in the yeah. Sandover medal, playing for Richard Noel Carter. Player. He was a member of the Richmond 1973 Premiership side as well. How come only 14 early. games? Sorry, uh, Brown, how come only played the 14 games? Well, I got suspended for throwing the ball too hard back to umpire Sutcliffe oh, yeah. uh, and missed three games. The two finals in the last game out at mm. Victoria Park, which was very disappointing because even though you only played 14 games, if you'd been lucky enough to be playing in a Premiership side, would have been, would have would been have, it, would have it, it, wouldn't it? It have been marvellous. And Ian Stewart and I uh, watched it, I think, that day. Now, most people remember Mel Brown from 1974, uh, the Windy Hill Brawl, uh, one of the most uh, historic days in AFL football when there was about 3,000 people uh, on the ground out at Windy Hill brawling. There was police, there were spectators, there were officials, there was players, and most people think you were responsible for starting it all. Just a minute, where were you, Kevin? I was, uh, I was very close to the race. <laughs> the race. Straight up the race. <laughs> <laughs> I went straight up the race. I looked at it. Like, Bloody hell. <laughs> What's going on? Well, when we got up there, you drunk two of the squashes. <laughs> there was only eight of left. That's right, they're all laid out, so I thought yeah. I'd better drink them. <laughs> were you responsible for starting the brawl at Windy Hill? I've always claimed innocence, but uh, most people do. But I think Jim Bradley's come out and uh, accepted a little bit of responsibility because it was quite funny. Uh, Jerker Jenkins fell on the ground and took a mark and I stood over him and 
pulled your shorts. I said, now I know why they call you jerker sort of thing. And we had a bit of a scrimmage, and that was it. And then as I came off, John Casson came around the boundary with a dressing gown and jumped, and that's all I saw, really, uh, the whole of it, other than being pelted with a couple of cans as we walked up the race. But uh, I think it was... Uh, I think poor old Graham Richmond was our lucky one. What he got six months and $2,000 fine, I think, for for hitting uh, Jim Bradley and breaking mm. his jaw. Did you get reported? I got a week. A week? A Who did week. you whack, Brownie? Did you whack I someone? I didn't hit anybody because I got trod on by the policeman's horse and all the bloody <laughs> oh, fellows all jumping up and down, <laughs> dancing around. You I got, got a week a... for punching See, the policeman's <laughs> horse? I got a week. So I think I was out of them all. I think I was innocent. Well, you've always had the reputation of being big, big bad Mal. Now, that, that brawl that took place in that state game that you were talking about, yeah. Bob, you went back to Western Australia and said you had concussion. <laughs> they only gave you one week after knocking out half the Carlton Football Club. Yeah. So, how many times did you actually get suspended? Oh, I suppose about 70 weeks. I, I got a year once for, uh, as a coach for running Cole Reevey back on the ground when we were 18 goals behind and uh, uh, they, nobody woke up and this dear old girl rang up the radio station on about the Wednesday <laughs> and said, I'm sure Mr Cole Reevey was on the ground uh, uh, at three-quarter time before that and he went back on again. So, that, I got a year for that. Um, <laughs> so that was a bit, and that day at WAFL normally, you know, politics, you're not allowed to be involved in football, but they put me in charge of uh, coaching throughout West Australia for the year, but you weren't allowed to have any involvement in football. Did you get, did you get, did you get time for breaking the microphone of the, what was that one? <laughs> no, no, that was when your friend Polly Farmer's boys were yeah, in a bit of strife. that's right, yeah. They, uh, the umpire lost control and they both got reported and uh, the Channel 7 reporter came out and we just put it in the rubbish bin to keep Australia beautiful. <laughs> what about the umbrella, Brownie? The umbrella, did you, didn't you whack someone or someone whacked nah, you? No, I got whacked. <laughs> you got whacked by the umbrella? Stay with us on the couch, Malcolm, <laughs> and uh, just relax on the Chesterfield yeah. there from Chesterfield Galleries, and Robert's looking after you because we said we need a big couch because oh, yeah. Malcolm Brown is coming. When we come back, Bobby's mailbag, and also we've got another special guest, someone who kicked 100 goals in a season. Matthew Campbell and coming up from a windswept MCG, Richmond hosting the Fremantle Dockers, their first trip to the MCG for the year and Tony Shaw, they're still searching for their first away win. Is today the day for the Dockers? Well I think they can here. This win will not suit the tools of the Richmond side, Matty, and for Richmond, well it's all about pride today. It certainly is. They're looking for their second win. It's been a dry patch for them. They're taking on the Dockers here on Fox Footy Channel. Take one city softy. I'm not used to this wide open spaces, creepy crawlies and that green stuff. Put him in the hands of an ex-SAS soldier. This morning, when I wake up, he takes away my tent. And train them to survive in the wild. Happy with that? I could get them. Not just yet, we were. Uh, oh! You know, for some strange reason, I think I've lost my appetite. Oh. It's times like this that I'm realising that me and wildlife really don't get on. Lost in the Woods, 8 o'clock Wednesday on Lifestyle. Weeknights, Matthew Campbell, Jason Bennett, Fox Footy News, the best footy news on the planet. Welcome back to Grumpy Old Men and our special guest of course is uh, Mel Brown. Mel, you play with a lot of great players in WA and you've seen some stay at home and some come across to the AFL. Who's been the best player you've seen in Western Australia, irrespective uh, of whether he, he actually came across here and played in the AFL? Well, St uh, Steve and Michael ranks very high, um, but I'd say Barry Cable would be the best player because I saw him win eight Ferris and Bess for Perth Footy Club, I think it was. He came over as a player the first time getting 25 kicks and three handballs, and he came back as the best tackler as an old man having three kicks and 25 handballs. Mm. I think he was, he was an amazing player, Cable. Everything he said he could do, he did. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. We went over and played a game there, and Billy Goggin was at his peak, and this little fella came out in the ground, and they said, oh, I want to watch him, he can play, but I said, how'll he go against Goggin? He never let Billy Goggin touch a ball. It was incredible. Very tough. Oh, well, that young great. Campbell, too, playing. Your young son, Brownie, you must be very proud of the young fella. Play more games than you, maybe? I hope he does, as I said before. Yeah, him, yeah. yeah, we are. Everybody hopes their kids do better than they do. And uh, I said to him today, he's got 196 games to go to, get, 194 games to go to get to 200. 
Yeah, <laughs> he's not. He's not one of. The, he's not getting into any trouble like his father. He's, has he got those tendencies? No, I think he, he's a good boy. He's a good boy, is he's he? He's a good boy. He's a college, little college poster. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, yeah. well, if he's a good boy, he's probably uh, sent a letter in for Bob's mailbag. Because oh. <laughs> everyone wants to win the prizes from you, Bobby. Oh, this fella, there's no doubt how this fella won the game. <laughs> just, just see how this started. Firstly, to you and the other blokes, many thanks for your really great show. So that's a good start. He's, he's, I think he said he's 69. So he fills the bill as a grumpy old man, but he, he wanted, he, he said, he's a Richmond supporter, I won't hold that against him, but he went, he used to live in Hoddle Street, North Richmond, is that right? He's telling the yeah. truth, yep, is he? Yep. Right, okay. And then he drove down to Cardinia Park to see Richmond play Geelong. <laughs> And the fellow he saw was a gentleman called Lindsay White, who actually kicked 10 goals that day. And he said, what happened to Lindsay White? Well, Lindsay White came from down near Warrnambool at Orford. And the first year he was at Geelong, I think he kicked 67 goals. He was a magnificent athlete, one of the best drop kicks that you've ever seen. Marvellous sprinter. But Geelong couldn't field a team through the war, didn't know whether he had enough petrol to take him up to Melbourne or bring him <laughs> back from Melbourne. Coupons. Or, you know, actually, we didn't, there weren't enough players around and the selectors at Geelong used to walk down Moorable Street of a Friday night and if you were over six feet, they'd say, what are you doing tomorrow <laughs> afternoon? Bring your bag and you get a game with Geelong. But Lindsay White was cleared to South Melbourne on the chance that when the war was over, he would come back and he did. And he was captain of Geelong for two or three years and actually was the most, oh, well, magnificent player. And I think when he was with South, he might have kicked nine goals in the preliminary final. But what happened to him, he, he actually, we were talking about it uh, with these, uh, with the, what he, the Achilles tendon. He mm. did that, and that sort of ruined his career. He then finished football. He went up, and the most unusual circumstances are very sad. He went duck shooting. And you know those big waders they used to wear? They filled with water, tipped him over, and he drowned. It's a very sad story with Lindsay White. So, there's the story of Lindsay White for a gentleman called Kevin Gatskin. And he uh, comes from St Mary's in New South Wales. And he's getting one of those magnificent retro radios you can see on the screen. And you'll get one if you write to Bobby's mailbag, 4444, South Melbourne, 3205. Well, Bobby, you've been saying for many weeks now, get someone on from Geelong. Oh. Here's yeah. Melissa. Our next guest this evening, a leading goal kicker for the Geelong Football Club. And boy, could he kick those goals. Please welcome Larry Donoghue. Hey, Larry. 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 <laughs> well, Bobby's been saying to us, Larry, get someone up from the, from the cats, you know. Get a local boy on the program. He's been nagging you, Kevin, has he? <laughs> he has. Now, you know, there's a great trivia question about this fella, Kevin. Now, give it to us, because you're the trivia king. The last person to wear number 23 to kick 100 goals for Geelong. That's right. <laughs> Not Douglas Wade. Larry yes, Donnelly. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I actually took over uh, Doug's yeah. number, Bob, didn't That's I? Right. When, um, uh, when Dougie uh, found all that Where money, money in playing? the suitcase at Arden Street. <laughs> Where were you playing when we discovered you? Well, I was actually playing at Thompson, Bob. That's right, uh, Thompson. A local GDFL side, and I yeah. just got invited down to, uh, to have a run with the under-19s, and uh, that's where it stemmed from. Did you find yourself being compared to Doug Wade? Oh, no, not really, Kevin, no. Um, I'd like to think I would have been, but no, no. I mean, Doug was just, uh, he was in his own right, Doug Wade, and um, I, I think really the only resemblance was the fact that, uh, you know, we both kicked under goals and we both wore the same number. Always a full forward, Larry, were you? or did you well, play in the ruck? No, I played a bit in the ruck, Doug. Yeah, I, uh, I actually, uh, in 1976, I did a fairly uh, heavy pre-season because I'd uh, only played 20-odd mm. senior games in three years. And I was uh, hoping maybe to play in the ruck, maybe changing with Sam. And Rod Olsen, in his first year, decided to play full forward in the practice games, and that's where it came from. There's a bit of a difference now. When you came to us, you were bigger than Browdy is now, <laughs> and now you're thin and, and I don't know what his Browdy is, but you've you've certainly lost a lot of weight. You were a huge fella, Larry. All good living, Bob. Oh, that was <laughs> <laughs> now you were there when that controversial gentleman called John Newman was John Newman captain when you were there. Yes, yeah. Oh, well, there's uh, two Nankers, then uh, Sam and David Clark all had stints at captain when I was there. Yeah. yeah. 
And have we got any good stories about Sam? Because he doesn't get much publicity. You well, know Sam, about him? Well, Sam, uh, one of the funny things about Sam was that he, uh, he travelled down from Melbourne. He lived in Melbourne, as most people knew, and he didn't want to live in Geelong. And by the time he got to the ground, it was normally half-time in the reserves. Uh, <laughs> and one of his ankles had no ligaments in it at all. No. And uh, it took um, uh, you know, Georgie Clark and... Uh, Oh, he was a Kevin Travel. Kevin Travel. It took him about half an hour to tape his ankles. We and sent we sent Dr. Kevin Travel to America to, America, to yeah. learn to tape his ankles so he could play. Yeah, and because Sam didn't see much seconds, there was a guy uh, who's who's made a name for himself coaching now, Jared Fitzgerald, who uh, was catching North Ballarat. Yes, and he came down to play a few games. Yeah, and Jared didn't play many games, and he uh, he got a game. Um, one day and Sam was captain and it was those days when you, you took the players around and introduced them to the umpire and, and Sam got uh, the umpires to Gerald and he just um, he didn't know who he was. <laughs> he didn't know his name. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't. He said, and this is, uh, yeah. what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that Sam actually, uh, yeah, and that, that, well, that's true that Sam didn't hardly ever see any seconds for him. <laughs> We kicked out the goal, Larry, and I think it was 76, I think it was. Yep. And uh, what, was it, what was it feeling like, the people running out on the ground? What do you think well, about that now? They're trying to have, if someone kicks 100 goals, they're going to try and stop that? What you, what's your thoughts about that? Well, uh, I, I'd like to see it not stop. The only problem now is that um, there seems to be more run out on the ground than, than what um, there used to be. You know, and yeah. uh, I, my, I probably uh, got to a stage where, um, you know, they run out about three times at Cotinia Park one day, but I missed the whole three of them. Is that the run back again? <laughs> that you with the curly hair? That there, was a Larry? fair yeah, haircut you had in those days, Larry. <laughs> curly that's hair, yeah. Scratch the knee, I'll kick you up to you, isn't it, uh, Larry? Scratch the knee, I'll put it over you. Yeah. Yeah. And poor Sarah. Poor little Sarah. Yeah, yeah young was Paul. A tremendous actually, Paul was very into their winning. Ah. Well... Kelvin Matthews. Kelvin Matthews. Matthews. Yeah, yes, Lee Matthews. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cement brother. legs. Billy used to kill him. <laughs> How tall are you, Larry? Uh, just under six six, Kev. Six six. So yeah. you're pretty big for a full forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I I, uh, I hold uh, don't hold that many records, but I think I am the tallest. Yeah. Hey, hey, what to kick hundred goals? Mm. Yeah. How do you feel about going? I think you went to Fitzroy too, Larry, didn't you? At the end of your career? Yeah, I did. I did. I uh, you know I had an unfortunate uh, situation with Geelong, with Geelong, which I probably look back and regret now. What um, was it, Guy? Um, oh, oh, well, just, just, just a little bit of a, a fall, you know, a, a little bit of a fall at the end of 1980, uh, and um, I look back on it now, and uh, I, I I probably you know could have done it a lot better. I made a couple of comments which I probably shouldn't have, and uh, you know interesting enough, I went to um, to Fitzroy, unfortunately dis re dislocated the shoulder that I had to trouble with yeah. and ended up having an operation. So I played half the year in the reserves and the other half uh, I was injured. Did the pre-season in 82. Robert Walls and Fitzroy were absolutely fantastic to me and everybody else. They yeah. were a terrific club. Uh, found myself just not enjo enjoying going to training mm. uh, and I, I think as everyone knows when you get to that stage then um, I, I actually uh, I finished and uh, I went round and had a yak to Robert and uh, he understood the situation was very good about it. And I was very grateful for the year at Fitzroy. I mean, it really opened my eyes to, to Melbourne life. Well, your first coach at Geelong was the great man that uh, Bobby got down to, Geelong, Graham Polly Farmer. Yes. What well, was Polly like as a coach? Well, actually, my first game of league football was Polly's first game as coach. And uh, I played centre-half forward, and uh, I wasn't really ready, you know, and, uh, but you don't go up and tell them that. <laughs> three weeks before, three weeks before my 18th birthday, and uh, I was picked on Duel. We were playing the 72 Grand Final site, and I was picked on Duel, who ended up playing a half-back flank. So I played the first half at centre half forward on Brent Croswell, and uh, you know how sometimes people say you, you haven't had a touch. Mm. Well, literally, I hadn't touched the ball. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even, I can't even remember the ball hitting a finger in a pack. <laughs> so you anyway, never got to it at all, Larry. Uh, uh, at three quarter time, at three quarter time, at, uh, about ten minutes into the third quarter, I took a mark on the half back flank. That's how far I went. <laughs> did a kick. Ian and Kurtz run past for handball. I said, "Sorry, Nick, I'm going to get one kick. I, I don't care about you." <laughs> so three quarter time, we're four points behind. No uh, thanks yeah. for centre forward and Polly said go to the back pocket. So I went down the back pocket and there was a, uh, a small fellow by the name of John Nichols who decided to to have a spell on the forward pocket so he stuck his backside <laughs> out twice and took two marks. <laughs> then David Mackay come down 
off the ball. We got, ended up getting beaten by eight goals. Dave Mackay, I thought, well, i better stand in front of him because he's got a good jump, and he did. He jumped straight over the top of me, and he <laughs> took a mark and kicked the goal. I ended up with one mark, one kick, one handball, yeah. and played on Croswell, Nichols, and Mackay, and that's a day that I'll never forget. <laughs> and the next week, were you in the seniors? No, I pulled a groin muscle. <laughs> <laughs> pulled a groin muscle. <laughs> and that was a legitimate, too. But I don't think I would have been, no. Who were the tough full backs? Uh, yeah. In well, I, I, uh, I probably, uh, one of the reasons, and in the end, I think I should have done more for my football, one of the reasons why I was contented with a couple of years uh, was that you had players that played fullback all the time. Uh, mm. You know, you had to play on David Dench twice, Jeff Southey twice, and Calvin Moore twice. So they were six games where you knew you weren't going to get eight nine goals. Um, there was a wipeout, do you Actually, reckon? I played on, at North Melbourne one day, and I couldn't work out why... The match committee weren't that happy with my performance. I found out that I kicked one goal and David Dench kicked two. <laughs> <laughs> so, full back, from full back, from back. So, you didn't follow him so up the probably, ground. They probably added up their sums and worked out that wasn't a very good day. <laughs> didn't you follow him up the ground? Well, I tried to. He was a bit too quick for me, Bob. <laughs> How's your pub going? Have you got a pub? Yeah, going? pub. Uh, Winchelsea Hotel. Yep. Uh, you going all right? on, yeah, going okay. You got a sign at the front. What's it say? Oh, have a beer with drink the with one who kicked a ton and have a gander at Larry <laughs> Zamba. Uh, all, uh, all those little uh, gimmicks. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you get down to watch the catch play? No, these Kevin, days? I haven't seen a game for a couple of years, but I will say this, is uh, since Brian Cook's been there, I've probably received more phone calls and literature uh, in three years than what I had mm. for a long while. So obviously he's pursuing the, the, the pass player situation. Unfortunately, uh, you know, with the hotel, Saturday's a bit difficult. So um, uh, I haven't seen a game for a couple of years, but I'm glad to see them uh, going well. Well, the Winchelsea Hotel must be about the only hotel you haven't owned in your lifetime, Mel. <laughs> no, we had a couple. Yeah, the old Olympic was pretty <laughs> tough with uh, Toddy Shelton. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, uh, it's quite amazing uh, sitting here with him, looking how big he is and how agile for a full forward. He uh, would have been a bit ahead of his time. It, yeah. it must have been a nice tribute to you to become the Coleman medalist when they sort of brought it retrospectively yeah yeah well it was Bob yeah, yeah. it's um it's something that uh, you know um, I probably the only the only regret I've got about it and the thing is that I kicked 105 and 76 and 95 and 78 I'd like to take five, five off and put them, on the yeah, other have it twice, and, <laughs> have it twice. Remember twice and, and yeah. I probably played as well in 78 and 76 I just didn't kick a straight yeah. yeah Larry fantastic to catch up with you I know all Geelong supporters will be thrilled to uh, see you tonight and uh, you know just relate some of those great stories. Uh, one of only 26 players to kick 100 goals really? in AFL football. It's a mighty effort. It is and so. something to be very, very proud of. And of course, Mel, you only played 14 games. A oh. lot less than uh, what was played by yeah. Larry, but I tell you what, you certainly had an impact in <laughs> AFL football. Thanks for joining us Thanks as well. For having us. And of course, uh, next week, we'll have more stars on Grumpy Old Men.